Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I had a question uh, uh, regarding uh, the supply chain issues with all the uh, with all the uh, hardcore boycotts going on in Europe. Uh, there's obviously going to be this is going to exas exasperate the supply chain issues we're having. Wheat. I mean, they're a big resource uh, yep. supplier to all Asia yep. and of course Europe. But it's not only that, it really doubles it because now they can't do business because they're SWIP, the SWIP codes. So, you know, they, the financing part can't get done either. So it's a double whammy. Yep. Now, it's, you know, the unintended consequences, it's going to affect us also in North America because it's going to drive the price of everything uh, up higher. Uh, what, yeah, do you, I mean what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on the unintended consequences, both from the banking side, because they're trying to, to cut them off there, and from the actual commodities that they supply Asia and everybody else. So I think they're definitely going to be unintended consequences. I don't think they're going to be huge. They will be some. Um, and I don't think they're going to be huge because the Russian economy is not that big. And the Ukrainian economy is not that big, even though Ukraine, too, is a big supplier of natural resources, um, uh, particularly a sudden gas that they use to make chips. Uh, so um, it, it could affect chip production, which is already in short supply. But look, any unintended consequences are the fault of the Russians. So uh, Putin is to blame for everything. Um, and um, what we, uh, uh, whatever costs we have to pay, they're on, they're on Putin. Uh, you know, the markets don't seem to be worried about it. And I, I always worry about second guessing markets. The stock market seems to think that this is not necessarily that bad for the U.S., that, it, yes, supply chains might get tighter, but uh, the Fed might not increase interest rates as much, so it might balance all balance out somehow. But it's, but it's, all, but it's always the incremental barrel that drives up prices through the roof. I know they're small in the total aspect of it, but it's the incremental for oil. It's the incremental barrel that can drive th things through the roof. But, you know, Biden could could uh, fix that by releasing uh, uh, some of the reserve that we have. Uh, you know, they tried the, that. It was a joke. I know, but he's a joke. <laughs> but, but, but he can do it, right? <laughs> but, but he, you know, uh, American producers sitting a lot of oil in the ground that they're not pumping out. Uh, Russia still wants to sell oil, and we are not embargoing the sale of oil. So they're still selling oil. Um, and uh, they're still selling natural gas because nobody wants to embargo that. And Russia won't stop it for now because they, they need the hot currency. They need, they need dollars. So I just don't see it, at least in the short run, as stopping this. Now, if somehow Putin says, I'm shutting down the gas, I'm shutting down the oil, and I'm not exporting wheat anymore. Now you've got a big problem. But, uh, you know, right now he's selling wheat to the Chinese. He's selling oil to the Chinese. It's a global market, and anything he sells to the Chinese impacts global markets. I just, you know, oil went up over hundred dollars a barrel first day. Has come down. I think it's at ninety one right now. Uh, it just the markets, at least, are saying this is not a big deal economically for us. Okay, right. One other follow up on the unintended consequences. What about the unintended consequences of the green movement? Now it just blows everything apart. Energy well, security. Yeah. Hold on. Energy security becomes primary now. You know, all this BS about ESG, this, that, this, that. Now even, they're in a corner. I don't know what energy security even means, but what comes primary is we should be we should be exploiting the earth and extracting as much cheap energy as we can from it. And uh, yeah, I think I think the tide is going to turn against some of the environmentalist actions. I, I'm seeing more and more people speaking up. I think this is going to do wonders for uh, Alex Epstein's book that's coming out in April. Uh, he should he should actually try to bring it out in March if he can, because I think I think it'll sell better. Um, I, I think the, I think it's e going to be easier to make the case for natural gas and for fracking. Uh, in the places like the UK, which is sitting on a massive amount of, uh, of natural gas. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, I think that the, the unintended consequence here is going to be positive in a sense that it's going to show how these environmentalists have made, uh, 
Europe completely depended on, 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 on Russia, particularly Germany. I mean, here's an unintended consequence. Uh, Germany today, is it today, has said that it will start spending over 2% of GDP every year on its military. It has said it's going to contribute more to NATO and it will invest more in R&D and more in troops and more in the military. Is this what Putin really wants? A stronger Germany? Here's an unintended consequence. Germany has also said for the first time ever that it is exporting weapon systems out of Germany to Ukraine. I don't think Putin wanted that. So I think there are a lot of positive externalities here, a lot of positive from, from uh, the perspective of the West, unintended consequences. You know, it's at the cost of Ukraine's uh, you know, blood and, and toil and, and wealth. But uh, I think uh, Russia is going to be weaker. I think China is going to be hesitant. And I think the West comes out of this stronger, more unified. And, uh, and the environmentalists take a blow. So you, NATO is going to be stronger. And, you know, NATO, less dependent on the U.S. I think generally, uh, you know, we're going to be in, uh, in, in, in much better uh, condition. And people who are afraid of Germany militarizing. Yeah, I know. I feel your pain. But I, I, I don't want to protect Germany for the rest of my life. I don't want to pay for German protection. Let German militarize and let the Germans and the rest of the Europeans handle it. It, it, it shouldn't be on the United States to give them uh, protection. So this, this is the wake up call the world needed. Well, we'll see what wakes up, but yes, I, it, 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 it could be, and, and it looks like there's certain positives that are going to come out of it. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content. And of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.